Oh man, so Bitcoin is holding very, very tightly at the 18,800 mark. Things are looking rather nasty leading up to an FOMC meeting. Plus, Ukraine Russia tensions continue to flare up. What does this mean for the crypto price? Where could we be heading in the short term? I'm giving you this emergency update video, guys. So smash up the likes. Don't forget to subscribe. As you guys know, I'm traveling on business, but today's a really important day. I'm going to do my best to make sure I'm I'm somewhere ready to live stream later on today. So please make sure you hit up the like button. Make sure you got your notification bell on because sometimes YouTube will fail to notify you. Today we can see Bitcoin starting the day off relatively flat, holding this. 18,800 level quite carefully but like as you guys know I'm waiting to see are we going to wick down and test that local low this is the previous low 17,500 range are we going to fall below this channel here and head towards this yellow line let me just get zoomed in here on the hourly chart and this is what we're watching right now are we going to lose this green line which is 18,800 18, and are we going to fall lower down to 17,500 is the FOMC going to cause this now let's take a quick look at what the indicators are telling us let's take a quick look at the pre-market in the US and you can see it's slightly tentative today okay just flat okay you can see oil speak, uh, spiking today obviously given the update from this man here vladimir putin who's gone ahead and announced a partial military mobilization not looking good i believe he's going to be speaking today as well giving a public address and this can all affect markets as well so even though this is not a political channel whatsoever it's about knowing what is going on and how is that going to affect markets because you got this fomc meeting but when you put something like this on top it can quickly change the narrative so you've got to be very very careful i'm going to walk through with you right now my thinking now that this new thing has kind of changed my thinking over last night so make sure you hit up the like button as you can see guys fear and greed index is sitting at 23 right the market is still extremely fearful and that's what we need to keep into perspective this this is a very fearful moment you've got bitcoin leading up to the fomc not even after the fomc leading up to it dumping right dumping hard like it did the other day falling below it fell all the way from 20,000 down below to 18,200 range and then we recovered a little bit but we've created a lower high and that's the worrying thing now you've got your high there you've got your lower high you got your low are we going to go post a lower low and therefore continue to downtrend and here that's what we need to keep an eye on now. So what we don't want to see, but I'm super planned for, is that 17,500 level. I mean, if we really don't want to see it, but I've got a plan for it nonetheless. Now, the other thing you'll notice is if you do come down to that level, I'm just going to show you here on this chart like so what you are creating in essence is a double bottom okay so it's not the end of the world that you end up to 17,600 because that is a W pattern in itself. Okay, so we need to keep an eye on that. But what we don't want to do is lose that level. That's where things are going to get really, really nasty. Touching 17,500 range is okay. And I've got some limit orders ready to buy me some cheap Bitcoin. But I'm also not going to go heavily in. I'm not. I'm going to be nibbling. Because if we fall below 17,600, then all bets are off. Then the structures start to break down. And things can fall rather quickly, rather painfully. And I've shared with you guys in previous videos about how we could be heading to that 12,000, 13,000 range. But for now, I'm focused on that 17,600. Let's hit that range. You can see I set a target from this symmetrical triangle back in August that I thought we were going to hit 17,600. We then got our, pre uh, our little pump and then dumped back it down again. And we're back to pretty much where we were, right? Which is back down at the bottom of the channel. So my mind is focused on this 17,600. Now, what does that mean? Why, why is it that I'm not feeling super positive about a pump to the upside? Well, for there to be a pump to the upside, there need to be some positive news and positive catalyst. But what do we have right now, right? I just showed you the front of CNBC. What do we have? We've got this guy at the front. Yesterday, we had the fact that ETH 2.0 was a, a bit of a flop and everybody felt it was anticlimactic, which, by the way, we predicted to the T. It's just how humans work and market works. There was nothing to be annoyed about. It went perfectly smoothly. You couldn't have expected anything better, right? But it's just how traders and investors sometimes think and how the market therefore operates. You've got the issue with inflation, missing expectations and therefore now the market is all but 83% priced in the fact that today we will get a 75 basis point rate hike. So we know we're getting 75 basis points. Bar a, a, a surprise 50 basis points, I can't think of anything bullish, right? That's the only thing that could make the markets explode. And by the way, it would explode if he did 50, 50 basis points because nobody is expecting it. 83% of the market is just expecting to carry on and do 75 basis points. You've got a, a smidge of people, 17% of people are expecting him to go hard, pull the band-aid off and do 100 base points i don't know if he's going to do that i really think it will still shock the market if he does that most people are thinking like i'm thinking which is that he'll do 75 basis points and 
the, the possibility is there for him to do 100 base points, but it's very unlikely that he will. So that's something I'm watching out for. I mean, obviously, if he does 100 base points, I think 17,600 is pretty much guaranteed. I think those limit orders could get hit. Uh, I think there will be some blood in the streets there in the market. More likely scenario is that 75 base points scenario. So let's try to map that out. If we get 75 basis points, I don't think we're going to get a crazy rally. I think we could see a little pump. I'm not saying we can't have a green day or two, but I just don't think it's going to be substantial. And what I mean by substantial is in order to get out of this mess we're in now, which you can see, let's just get our pen out. And what we want to do in order to get out of this mess is you want to be coming, you've got this, uh, you've got this level here, okay, which is your high. Then you've got your next high. You've got your low. And now you're forming another low just slightly there as well. So in order to get out of the me this mess, you'd have to do this, right? You'd have to create a W pattern, a small W pattern in that in this area. So which is coming down here, bounce, come down here and get a strong bounce now to 22,000. Now, do I think the 75 base points will allow us to do that? I don't think there's going to be that much, you know, euphoria around a 75 basis point pump that can get us to 22,000. I think the market's not going to feel too positive about that because the overwhelming message, and by the way, this is where it's going to come to the nuance, which I'm going to speak about as well, the over, overwhelming feelings that Jerome Powell is not on top of inflation. So if he does another 75 base points, markets will be like, what is this guy doing? Why is he so gentle? Like, they want him to just get on with it at this point. We wanted him for six, seven months to just get on with it. And then the markets had to do his dirty work for him and price in the expectations in the market for him. Because he's almost, like, too too soft. He doesn't want to just rip the Band-Aid off. So there's going to be that level of frustration if we get 75 base points. Because ultimately, even though 100 base points is more shocking for the market, it's one of those things where they just want it now. They just want to get through it, get done with it, and get to a tightening position, tighten, bring inflation down, and then let's get on with our lives, right? Um, so that's one of the things we need to watch out for as well. Now, obviously, this is going to come down to the press conference. Half an hour after you get after you get the FOMC announcement, which tells you the interest rate, and we'll cover that live, you will then get the press conference where Jerome Powell is asked a bunch of questions. And this is what tends to move the market a lot more intraday. So if you're looking for trading opportunities, if you're looking to take some moves today, it's that press conference which really starts to dictate the tone. If he comes out hawkish, which I expect him to, comes out firm, comes out strong, then he could continue to strangle the market so we can continue to see red side as he's speaking if he comes out a little bit soft maybe talking about when he could pause rate hikes maybe giving us a clue of what he's going to do at the next meeting that is when we can see something a bit more positive in the markets but again i can't see that given that inflation reading which hasn't come down too significantly how is he going to come out super soft and dovish i mean last time he did that the market decided to run to twenty five thousand there is he really going to make the same mistake again or is he going to continue to keep his foot on the neck of the markets to make sure he gets the desired outcome he needs desperately right now so lots to play for today on top of that you've got this issue obviously of putin increasing his military action over in ukraine so we need to continue to monitor that as well because this could be one of those situations where if we get the 75 basis points uh we were expecting the markets will just quickly absorb that they'll listen to the press conference and then they'll be back, back focused on this big geopolitical issue right so there's a lot to play for we need to be tuned into the fact of what's going on geopolitically anybody who's just telling you oh just follow ta chatting absolute rubbish you've got to look at ta you've got to look at fundamentals you've got to marry on top of it the macros and then you've got a winning formula for trading and investing hope you guys enjoyed this video if you appreciate this quick update video on the side of the road smash the likes don't forget to subscribe i will be live later on so make sure your notification bells are on make sure you're in the telegram make sure you're on twitter make sure you're on all the channels so if one of them messes up and doesn't notify you you get the link to the live stream you're in there you're getting the alpha you know what you're doing hope you guys enjoyed this video smash the likes and subscribe and i'll see you in the next one